After a few years of mixed success, Endgame has become one of the most dominant robots within the field. Alongside the boys from New Zealand, I took a look inside the robot to see the secret of their success. What do you attribute the secret sauce to Endgame? So basically, uh, lots of things inside of Endgame are quite redundant. Uh, for instance, if we, if we have a look, pull the top off, uh, there's Endgame sort of divided up into four quadrants. Each quadrant has its own motor driver, motor, and wheel. So basically, any one of these quadrants could be entirely annihilated, and the robot would pretty much drive normally. Like, when one of these wheels goes down, uh, Jack doesn't notice, really, in the drive. <laughs> Clearly, the electronics are a major part of this redundancy that they've built into the system. What do you... Who do you attribute that to? So, uh, this is Shane. He's our electronics wizard. He should have a hat and a staff. And... Yeah. yeah, I mean, he'd suit the part. Yeah, I'll carry one next year. So, <laughs> these are my babies. And this is the module system in Endgame. So, we've got a bunch of these different power modules that all have integrated switches, receivers, batteries. So, each of these corners runs as a complete robot by itself. So, around Endgame, we have about seven robots worth of electronics spread out just for redundancy. And you're doing all the mixing of that within the radio? So that's done on the boards themselves. Here's one that we have opened. This has an onboard processor with our custom board here and our custom firmware here. And this does all the mixing to monitor for uh, if a radio dies, if the ESC goes into overcurrent, uh, voltages, temperatures, and this uh, basically just keeps the robot happy for us. Easy to drive then? Easy to drive. You'll never know they're running if they're working right. <laughs> one of the things that was sort of your bane for many seasons it felt like was the self-rider like every time i came and asked you hey what's going on what's if you know you're getting ready to go in you'd be like i don't know if the self rider's gonna make it this time you might like, just stop using it so that, <laughs> so that was that's uh, confidence yeah that was when we first put this particular self-rider on it was uh it was a different mechanism it, it had a lot of the same concepts but it wasn't as as robust uh ever since uh we we've had this self-rider uh, it hasn't been needed. Uh, the weapon, at the same time, improved in reliability so much that it never stops spinning. So it's the primary self-rider, and this is just the backup. Something else you guys are really known for is ground game. I yeah. mean, you guys play the chess out there for that field. You have a fork for every occasion, every flavor. It's like going into a, you know, a perfect meal setting with the salad <laughs> fork and the crab fork and the, yes. like you guys have everything I mean like sometimes we just design a fork or, or a wedgelet with no one in mind and <laughs> we're just like it's a different geometry and sometimes and you see a robot and you're like wait a minute that, that <laughs> one work. that we made that, yeah. that, that's perfect for that one Every uh, robot's fork is a little different, so we have so many ways we can configure the front. We'll look at the robot, we'll see how long they are, we'll see where the forks are, and specifically place them where we think they're going to be most effective. Yeah, yeah so basically it's, it's not only just to do with like the distance there's, but like where on the robot they're, they're mounted. For instance, if, if they're mounted like, you know, 12 inches apart, and we think we can get some things in between them, then we'll place them in places where we think that'll work. Have you had any miscalculations with your forks? Have there been problems? Oh, I mean, there was the one time where we dived headfirst into the kill source slots. <laughs> that won't happen again. <laughs> yeah, happens, we've, yeah. we've adjusted the forks to stop that happening. So. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. Obviously, you're going to go and prepare and do more, uh, but I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, yeah thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. It's always good to see you.